Hello and welcome to the channel. Now, this video is all about environment and ecology, specifically on environmental pollution. While in this part, I will cover extensive topics under the air pollution. There will be subsequent parts in future. There I will cover the other pollutions as well. Now, my target here is to cover all the relevant dimensions regarding this air pollution. Uh, this will be helpful not only for the various examinations but also for the general awareness and this will be a totally factual video so kindly watch the video in full so without any delay let's begin so by definition the pollution is defined as an addition excessive addition of certain undesirable materials to the physical environment which consists of water, air and land, making them less fit or totally unfit for the survival of any life form. And pollutants are nothing but physical, chemical or biological substances which released into the environment, maybe directly or indirectly, which is harmful to the humans and to the other living organisms. Or it can be defined as are the materials or factors which cause the adverse effect on the natural quality of any component of the environment. Now, for example, smoke from the industries and the automobiles and chemicals from the factories, uh, radioactive substances from nuclear power plants or nuclear plants, uh, sewage from the local houses and discarded household articles, they are common example of the different pollutants. Now how the pollutants are classified? There are a number of different criteria of classification of pollutants. So first criteria is according to the form in which they persist after the release into the environment. So according to this uh, classification there are two parts. One is primary pollutant, another is secondary pollutant. Now, in primary pollutant, they persist in the form in which they are released or they are added to the environment. So, there is no change in, the, in them while they are adding to the environment such as DDT, uh, plastic, they are primary pollutants. And secondary pollutants are, they are formed by the interaction among primary pollutants. For example, the PAN or the peroxyacetyl nitrate is formed with the interaction of the nitrous nitrogen oxides or NOx and the hydrocarbons HCs. Now there is another criteria according to their existence in the nature which is qualitative pollutants qu sorry quantitative pollutants. Quantitative pollutants these occur in the nature and become pollutant when their concentration reaches beyond a threshold level such as carbon dioxide and nitrogen, dio nitrogen oxide. Now you may be knowing that this due to the excessive uh, presence of or excessive releasing of the carbon dioxide, the global warming is taking place. Now there is another criteria called qualitative pollutants. Now these do not occur in nature and they are man-made, okay, such as the fungicides and herbicides, pesticides, DDT are also such examples. Uh, there is a, a different criteria which is according to the nature of disposal such as biodegradable and non-biodegradable. Biodegradable uh, pollutants are such waste products, household wastes such as organic wastes uh, which may be degraded by microbial action such as the sewage wastes from the household. There are non-biodegradable pollutants as well which are not decomposed by the microbial action. And they are plastics, glass, DDT, salts of heavy metals, radioactive substances. And another criteria is according to the origin. It can be natural or it can be anthropogenic. Anthropogenic means they are human factors. Okay. Now natural are, it can be volcanic, forest fires. And anthropogenic factors are vehicular pollution, industrial pollution and household pollution. So what are the causes of pollution? Now this is the main cause of pollution that is the human population which is uncontrolled growth of human population and 
depending on this particular criteria the other forms of other causes are happening such as rapid industrial industrialization urbanization uncontrolled exploitation of nature forest fires uh, so uh, the uh, these three activities they are basically caused by the humans or the human population due to growth of human population and this criteria such as forest fire and the radioactivity volcanic eruption strong wind these are natural causes of pollution so how the pollution is classified they can be air pollution they can be water pollution they can be noise pollution soil and thermal radiation these all different type of pollutions and in order, in order to control the environmental pollution the government of india has passed the epa act or the environmental pollution protection act 1986 okay to protect and improve the quality of air and water and soil so let's see the first one that is air pollution which will be covered in this part so air pollution basically refers to any physical chemical and biological changes in the air it is the contamination of air by any harmful gases or by dust or by smoke which affects the plants animals humans drastically or it uh, maybe it is caused by the presence of one or more contaminants in the atmosphere in such quality and for such duration these two factors are important quality and duration as it is injurious or tends to be injurious to human health and welfare and it is also for the animal and plant life also so air pollution is aggravated because of the four main developments one is the increasing traffic uh, growing cities rapid economic development and industrialization these are mainly human factors uh, there is a certain percentage of gases which is present in the atmosphere in a normal situation or in a uh, normal condition in atmosphere such as oxygen uh, nitrogen and then argon and all such gases such as uh, h2o or water vapor is also there but an increase or decrease in this composition of the gases is harmful to survival and this imbalance of gaseous composition has resulted in an increase in the earth's temperature which is known as global warming now airborne emissions emitted from various industries are a major cause of concern and these emissions are of two forms one is the spm or solid suspended particulate matters and the gaseous emissions thus air pollutants can be solid particles liquid droplets or gases or they can be natural or man made the pollutants have been classified into primary and secondary categories so what are the primary pollutants they are directly emitted from the uh, sources various sources such as fossil fuel consumption uh, volcanic eruption factories industrial emissions such as oxides of sulfur or sox and oxides of nitrogen or nox and the oxides of carbon or cox and the particulate matters methane ammonia cfcs and the toxic metals as well and what are the secondary pollutants they are not emitted directly from the sources they are basically a result of various reactions between the primary pollutants such as these different primary pollutants they react with themselves with some other factors as well and they form this secondary pollutants and the examples are ground level ozone smog pops pop stand for persistent organic pollutants and pan or peroxy acetyl nitrate and pcb polychlorinated biphenyl these are all secondary pollutants now classification of pollutants particulate pollutants and gaseous pollutants in particulate lead fly ash metallic oxides nanoparticles are there in gaseous it is carbon monoxide dioxide and cfc ozone nox and then uh, sulfur dioxide then there is volcanic uh, volatile uh, organic compounds or vocs and then uh, benzene ethylene uh, biological pollutants such as pollen and uh, the uh, spores of the uh, various fungi and asbestos radon is also there 
and this particle particulate matter is nothing but small pieces of solid material for example a smoke particle from the fires bits of asbestos and dust particles ashes from the industries or chimneys they dispersed into the atmosphere these are different types of particulate matters such as aerosol primarily which is a general general term for uh, particles suspended in the air and this aerosol is uh, nothing but uh, the sprays from pressurized cans such as foam cans or the spray cans such pressurized cans uh, contain aerosols and what is mist mist is nothing but an aerosol consisting of liquid droplets there can be sulfuric acid mist and what is dust it is a aerosol containing solid particles that are blown into the air produced from larger particles by grinding them in down such as dust storms and smoke what is smoke it is an aerosol which uh, consisting of solid particles or a mixture of solid and liquid particles uh, produced by chemical reactions such as fires cigarette smoke smoke from uh, the chimneys burning garbage such examples and what is fume it is general term which is uh, nothing but the smoke but from applies uh, specifically to aerosols produced from condensation of hot vapors or of metals okay such as zinc and lead fumes and next is a plume plume is nothing but geometrical shape from the smoke coming out of the chimney such as this this is the chimney and uh, when the smoke is coming out of it it kind of making it is a uh, kind of making a, a plume right and then fog fog is nothing but an aerosol consisting of the water droplets then smog it is a general term used for the mixture of smoke and fog okay so let's see the major gaseous uh, air pollutants first is the carbon monoxide now it is a colorless odorless and tasteless but highly toxic gas uh, which is slightly dense than air and it is short lived okay in the atmosphere the vehicular exhaust containing uh, is the major source of the carbon monoxide the sources of carbon monoxide mainly chemical reactions such as incomplete combustions in the uh, ic engines or the uh, fossil fuel burning such as this this is the formula and the reaction of the carbon dioxide and carbon containing materials such as this this carbon dioxide and carbon containing materials they combine to form the co as well which is at elevated temperatures into the industries and such as blast furnaces so in blast furnaces the co is also produced and it is also produced by dissociation of the carbon dioxide okay at high temperatures uh, so what is the uh, problem of this or what is the difficulty to have this carbon monoxide in atmosphere it lowers the amount of oxygen when it is entering into our blood stream it uh, it can slow or reflexes and make us confused and sleepy and when it enters into the uh, blood of hemoglobin animals such as humans it combines with the hemoglobin and produced carboxy hemoglobin and this carboxy hemoglobin basically it hinders or it stops the uh, normal carrying of oxygen through the blood so it is detrimental so how can we control the co pollution the petroleum and the diesel fed automobiles they are accounting for the major share in the carbon monoxide emission here hence uh, efforts should be made to uh, reduce this carbon monoxide pollution which are mainly from the automobiles such as by using the catalytic converters or cat cons in the ic engines or the automobiles so use, use usage of the cat con system in two stages helps to em eliminate the pollutants from the exhaust gases before they are discharged into the atmosphere in this cat con system the pt or the platinum is basically ma mainly used there are other other uh, met metals as well such as uh, palladium it is also used and what are these two stages one is the reduction one is reduction one is oxidation these two stages are basically happening in into a catalytic converter so next is the carbon dioxide it is the principal greenhouse gas which is emitted by the human activities such as burning of the coal 
oil and natural gases and it is a major producer of the greenhouse effect and this greenhouse effect is nothing but the radiation when radiation and heat emitting from earth's surface need to be released out into the atmosphere but because the carbon dioxide levels are so high into the atmosphere there is an ozone effect onto the ground level and these particular elevated carbon dioxide into the ground level or the uh, normal atmosphere is uh, basically the reason for the heat is trapping inside the earth's surface and the earth cannot cool down at night and this also means that oceans cannot cool off and the water is getting warmer so it is nothing but uh, due to the uh, elevated carbon dioxide levels the greenhouse gas or green greenhouse effect is taking place whereby the earth if this is the earth then earth is emitting the radiation into the atmosphere into the normal times in the night but due to this uh, co2 levels are high due to the fact this co2 levels are high into the atmosphere this traps the heat as it is a greenhouse gas it traps the heat a long long wave long wave infrared radiation infrared this long wave infrared radiation which is emitted back to the atmosphere is trapped by this carbon dioxide okay so yeah the carbon dioxide is also associated with the uh, ocean acidification because it dissolves in water to form the carbonic acid h2co3 right the carbon dioxide traps radiation at the ground level creating the ground level ozone this atmospheric layer prevents the earth from cooling at the night and this is also a contributor to the environmental effect known as the acid rain although it is not a main contributor but it is also the carbon dioxide's effect is also there in acid rain now carbon dioxide is a basically an asphyxiant gas well asphyxia is nothing but a condition when the body is deprived of oxygen and which is causing the unconsciousness or it may cause death also and concentrations of around 7% uh, into the atmosphere it will cause the suffocation and even in the presence of sufficient uh, oxygen manifesting manifesting as dizziness a uh, headache and the unconscious unconsciousness will happen so next is the sulfur dioxide sulfur dioxide is a toxic gas which is pungent and irritating smell is there and it contributes mainly to the acid rain phenomenon we will see it in the later section of this video and it is released naturally by the volcanic activities and also by human activities such as industrial processes coal burning fossil fuel burning petroleum combustion because uh, into this uh, particular fossil fuel sulfur is a major component uh, the greatest source of sulfur dioxide uh, in the atmosphere is basically due to the burning of the fossil fuels in the power plants and the industrial facilities the other sources that include are the industrial processes such as extracting metal from the ore and the natural sources such as volcanic activities and the locomotives ships and other vehicles heavy equipment that burn the fuel with high sulfur content the major so2 emission hotspots in india are singrauli in mp and neveli and uh, chennai in the tamil nadu talcher jharsuguda in odisha korba in chatisgarh kutch in uh, gujarat ramagundam in telangana chandrapur and koradi in Ma maharashtra and this particular uh, data is detected or collected by the nasa's omi satellite which is ozone monitoring instrument and the primary reason for the india's high so2 emission output is because of the expansion of the coal based electricity generation and the vast majority of coal based power plants they lack something called a fgd technology it is fgd stands for flue gas desulfurization and this fgd systems may involve wet scrubbing and dry scrubbing this particular wet scrubbing is nothing but a system in which 
the flue gases are brought in contact with an absorbent which can be either liquid or a slurry of solid material the sulfur dioxide so2 will be dissolving into this particular absorbent and will be trapped into into it and in dry systems this particular uh, absorbent is nothing but dry pulverized lime or limestone and the same absorption is taking place here also our supreme court has uh, already ordered to put a dead is uh, actually put a deadline for the installation of the fgd technology in the power plants from 2017 to december 2019 so there was a deadline in the delhi ncr region and till 2022 in the other parts of the country now in this context there is another uh, phenomenon we should know that is london smog london smog is uh, a phenomenon happened in the past and is well known for its disastrous effect and the heavy smog basically this so2 concentration was very high and this uh, condition prevailed in london for 5 days which killed around 4000 people and this caused uh, causes death due to bronchitis pneumonia and respiratory troubles uh particularly among the aged people so how to control these uh, sulfur dioxide or sulfur oxide pollution it's basically a flue gas so to a flue gases from the industrial plants can be removed by the chemical scrubbers such as wet scrubber or dry scrubber and the flue gases are led uh, through a bed of uh, slurry of limestone calcium carbonate which absorbs the sulfur dioxide quite efficiently so remember this phenomenon scrubbing phenomenon it is used to remove the uh, sulfur dioxide or sulfur oxide pollution from the industrial pollution the next is the nox or the nitrogen oxide nox is generic term which is various containing various nitrogen oxides produced produced during the combustion and nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide no or no2 is respectively the former the no which is a colorless and odorless gas but the later that is no2 is a reddish brown and pungent having pungent smell now most of the nitrogen oxides are produced due to the high temperature combustion which is around this range of temperature mainly in the ic engines or the uh, vehicular pollutions or the engines of the diesel and petrol vehicles and uh, coal burning power plants and they are also produced by the lightning lightning of the uh, sky and uh, oxygen and nitrogen do not generally react with each other in the normal temperature but at the high elevated temperatures they produce various oxides of nitrogen and at such temperatures arise in the ic engine core or internal combustion engines and the power plant boilers and agricultural fertilization or fert uh, sorry fertilizer fertilizers and the nitrogen fixing plants the leguminous plants also contribute to the atmospheric nox pollution by promoting nitrogen fixation by microorganisms and the nox gases react to form smog and acid rain as well as being central to the formation of the tropospheric ozone now when this nox and the vocs that is the volatile organic compounds they react in the presence of the sunlight a different phenomenon is uh, uh, happening which is called the photochemical smog okay and this is also a uh, uh, environmental pollution and uh, basically due to the reaction of nox and the vocs however there are other pollutants as well but remember there should be the presence of sunlight always now in the air nox is converted into the nitric acid and this nitric acid is one of the constituents of the acid rain and these are all the reactions please look at it and uh, from auto exhaust emissions this nox is removed by means of catalytic converters or catcon system okay now thank you for watching the part 1 of this particular air pollution topic now the part for the part 2 of this uh, particular air pollution i will give the link in the i section above 
or else I will also give the link in the description section below. Kindly watch the part 2 as well.